Yo, what's going on, homies? It's your boy Stumped back from the OPTC video. And in today's video, we're diving back into Pirate King's Adventures with a bit of an EXP farming strat. Now, every single season, I like to dive in once I've cracked level 100 or done level 150, or once you've got all your turtles, to then maximize what you can from this game mode. And to maximize the most out of it, EXP is definitely the best thing to farm. You get a whopping 177,000 EXP with a level 10 Ho ship and a double Marco or Momo on the mini bosses and the final boss. So in today's video, we're going to be doing our mini boss run. We're going to be using the auto strat and we're also going to be versing uh, the final boss at level 90. Because once you hit level 150, you can just go back, do level 90. You get the same amount of EXP, so like you may as well farm it on an easy one and it makes it nice and simple. So starting off against Shanks, the mini boss team looks a little bit like this. Big shout out to my homie Kaido for the team build. Um, he is a big advocate of EXP farming when it comes to this game mode as well. And he put together this auto team for the mini bosses. Now, as you guys saw at selecting Shanks, uh, I have kept Shanks at level one. Um, the drops, the EXP gain, everything you can get from this mini boss does not change whether you do it at level 1 or level 150. I have no idea why they designed it that way, why the level 150 doesn't give better rewards. Look, maybe it does. Maybe it, maybe it has a higher chance of dropping Hime Turtles rather than just Cola. However, farming Cola for this game mode should be the preface of what it is. Obviously, it's built around Turtles as well, but getting as much Cola stocks as possible to get your ships to level 12, get your mods maxed out, all that fun stuff, is also something you want to farm here as well. So look, level 1 compared to level 150 for what you actually have to do, and the way that you get your turtles, it's very, very easy to do something like this. Now remember, the mini boss stages, they're designed to give you the max amount of turtles. After level 100, you'll be able to take on both mini bosses every single map, and this is just going to guarantee you a lot more turtles throughout the run. Both Luffy and Kid give you a guaranteed drop, and then with the uh, BBE unit, the... Bluno, Beppo, and Sunnycoon, or BBS, and the 6 plus of Zephyr, you're getting a 75% chance at another drop on top of that. Now, they're mainly here because they have good supports. They just help the auto strat move a little bit nicer um, with stuff like attack down removal and then the defense up and threshold removal. Uh, sorry, de defense up and damage reduction removal from Iron. So that's the big reason they're here. But look, just chuck your highest boosters on and just like call it a day. As level 1 doesn't have a lot of HP and hitting auto, it might take a little bit longer without those supports, but you're not going to die, especially if you are using some strong captains like Marco. For myself, in these rewards as well, the mini bosses give really good rewards. I always prioritize the green tickets, as should you guys, especially if you're a newer player. There's a lot of stuff to pick up in that shop, so you really want to make sure that you're picking up those green tickets every time you see them. For myself, I don't prioritize cola because I blessed with a bunch of Rayleigh points. Um, so I actually choose Turtles as my next option. Um, obviously, if it's like one like low-level Turtle or 60 Cola, I'll probably pick the 60 Cola. But most of the time, I will pick the Turtles over, over Cola just because I don't like grinding for Turtles. Like, this is my Turtle farming. Um, I like to try and maximize as much out of it as possible. But obviously, you can get other... Um, Total gains from just doing like the Hime farming on like that five stamina event. Another way to run this a lot faster, and this is a really bad example because I did it against Top Musica, but against this Shanks fight especially, you can just wave clear your way through. Activating Marco's super class is going to allow you to just kill turn one and turn two very easily. And then against Shanks, Yaswap doesn't have normal attacks only. Unfortunately, this Top Musica fight does. And because of that, stage three, you actually still need to tap anyway. So I'd recommend just hitting auto for, for Top Musica. It, it just moves a little bit nicer, as you can see. Like, I totally spaced on the whole normal attacks only. But look, we move. Um, iron support's great for the defense up, as you guys saw there. We have the Sabo support for the final stage of this top music fight, because there's a lot of defense up. Uh, we have Law on BBS, so that way we get around attack down. And then on Marco, we have uh, Whitey Base. She's another um, attack down remover as well. So you got options when it comes to supports, which is always nice. But the big one I'd recommend is the defense up of Sabo and Iron, because tapping through stuff like damage reduction and whatnot isn't a problem, stereotypically. Uh, but getting through defense up can be a bit of an issue. So uh, Kaido was using this team to farm the final boss as well. Uh, I believe he had Vivi on uh, Luffy though for the final boss. Uh, against Brook. So if you guys wanted to do that, if you're at a low level, you can actually use this team to farm 
over there as well. It works quite nicely and you just pick up so much EXP. So they were the mini bosses. Try to fight the PvP fight on the map as well. I'm just going to fast forward to the final boss now um, as that's pretty much what we're here for. But as you can see before I go, you get a bunch of drops just straight from the mini boss. There's 177,000 EXP right there. And then we're picking up four turtles. So getting to the 500 turtles like this, it's not the smartest. Um, doing this after the 150 or after you've got the 500 turtles is definitely going to be the play. Let's move on to the final boss. All right, so moving along the map, I have been prioritizing uh, Sanji statues. Something I do want to note as well is just prioritize Sanji statues just to help you guys clear 150. You will need to do like 1.5 billion HP. So like prioritize your quick units because this PK is an absolute doozy. As you can see, we're over level 100, so we can select 90 and then we can dive into the team. Which looks a little bit like this. Now it's led by Marco with a friend, Captain Momo, but you can run your own Momo if you have Momo. This is just a way to suffice with people that don't have Momo, and that way you can at least run hybrid options, or if you have Momo, just run, like, just run double Momo. If you guys don't have Carrot Level Limit Break 5 as well, you can use the Onami support on uh, Luffy. That's uh, not Luffy, on Sanji. That's going to set defense to zero on stage 4 anyway. So if you don't have Carrot Level Limit Break 5, you're in for a good time. However, if you don't have Carrot even 6+, plus, you can probably just replace her with Threshold Remover, I guess. Team won't run as smoothly, but look, it, it should still work. Uh, on turn 1, we're just going to tap with Momo. Momo gives an attack boost for 4 turns and auto procs that special on turn 1. So that way, we can start carrying this attack boost through the entire fight. Momo is actually, ironically, so good for this fight. And this is like the one first season he's not boosted. So it's a bit of a shame, but look, we move. On stage 3, we come up against Chopper. He has a barrier as well as um, giving us block orbs, and he has resilience. So Momo's just great here, because as long as you have a Luffy on the team, you can rotate those block orbs into Wano slots, and then his end of turn damage will just get around the resilience. We're going to pop the super class of Marco here as well, if you are using Marco. If you're not using Marco, don't worry about that. Just use like a, like a, a chain boosting support on someone. I don't know, like Zoro on any of the slashes. Um, that'll definitely work, but look. Using Marco here means we auto proc on stage four. We get four turns of special bind here, four turns of attack down, and there's four turns of defense up. The auto proc, it's not going to give us the attack boost, but it gives us the clock buff to get the chain boost on the final stage. To get around the special bind, we have Robin. Robin gives one turn of cooldown as well. It works exceptionally well. Marco giving that extra turn of cooldown is actually quite clutch as well. Um, so if you guys do have Marco, like running this hybrid is definitely going to be the best way, but like if you just run double Momo, you, you, you're probably going to be fine as well. Um, just use like the Mr. 3 support or something on Robin. Um, using Sanji here is going to give us a chain boundary because you need to be above a 3.0 chain boundary. And then using Carrot to become our captain is just going to help out on the final stage. She stays there for three turns. As a captain, she's not going to take the attack down on the final stage, which is great. Uh, plus, she goes through the defensive effects on the final stage. Now, on this turn against Luffy, you, you actually can't do damage. Otherwise, you take a 50% HP cut and you take 10,000 damage of pain. Now, with this team, like... We're at a point where that, that doesn't really matter. It's level 90. Um, it's not the end of the world. So I just use Momo. Momo removes the attack down. And it's all pretty much hunky-dory from there. Um, on the final stage, you only need to use the Luffy special anyway. And the Sanji special. And then that way, you just have enough HP. As long as you have over 20,000 HP, you're going to survive. And it's going to be all hunky-dory. Using Sanji, though, gives you chain boundary. He removes the barrier, too, which is awesome. But look, Carrot just gets through that. Like I said, if you have a... Threshold remover instead of instead of carrot, you can do that. But look, I was trying to avoid taking extra damage from the pain. Using a chain boundary though only allows you to now tap with four units, which is a little bit of a problem, but honestly, not really, because the HP threshold of this particular brook is not where nowhere near it needs to be. With Luffy, you get a full board of tandem orbs, so you don't have to worry about the reduced attack from type orbs. And as you can see there, we didn't even tap with carrot and we were just absolutely bonking it. So nice. There we go. EXP level 90. And auto runs for the map. So hopefully it helps you guys out to get some EXP gains to maximize your pirate level. Look, one day we'll get to level 1,000. And once we do that, we'll do like a short or something like that. I don't know. It's like we move. So if you enjoyed the video, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, do all that good stuff. Most importantly, wherever you guys are in this beautiful world, please remember to enjoy the rest of your day. As always, homies, thank you for watching. And I'll catch you all in the next one.